Hello Year 10, we're going to have a look at current and potential difference today, so following on from the previous lesson. Uh, so before we go any further, let's have a quick quiz to start with. So what I would like you to do is to pause the YouTube video here. Can you name the six different components that are on the screen? So you are expected to be able to name all of these different components um, once you or oh, for the exam. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at those. Let's go through the answers together. So the top one, hopefully you remember this one from the last lesson, is an open switch. So this is just a switch. The second one looks very much like the fifth one. Well, the second one is a cell, which means the fifth one is a battery, which means we've got multiple cells put together to make one battery. Third one down is a voltmeter. We'll learn a bit more about that one and the next one, which is an ammeter in today's lesson. And the final one is a filament lamp. Remember, it's a filament one because we will be learning about different ones as we go through this topic. So well done, ladies and gentlemen, if you manage to get those correct. OK, so what do we need to cover today? Well, the four statements at the top here are what the uh, government expects you to understand and the five statements at the bottom are what I expect you to understand from the end of this. So we've got to know what a voltmeter is and how to measure it. We've got to define what potential difference is. We've got to describe how to measure current, describe the conditions needed to produce an electrical current and describe the behaviour of a current at a junction. OK, so let's start off with what a current is. Well, a current is a flow of electrons. OK, in fact, it doesn't just need to be electrons. So we're going to say here it's a flow of charged particles. And in our case, with electricity, we're going to say it's electrons, but it can be other charged particles as well. Uh, it is measured using an ammeter. And it's the flow flow per second and we could call it amperes the units uh, or more commonly we now call it amps okay amperes because it is French so what do I mean by current well I mean that if I've got my wire here is my wire then inside of the wire we know there are all of these uh, free electrons, electrons that can move, they all have this charge of minus one. And as they move, if there is a flow of them, if those electrons are moving through the wire, then that is a current. Okay, so we could have an example here of a filament bulb and an ammeter. And so I could have a current of electrons flowing that way, which would then be also flowing that way, which would then also be flowing that way. So the electrons are moving through this wire, obviously a lot more electrons than we've got in this diagram here, but they're moving through this wire, carrying their charge with them. That is what a current is. Which leads us to one of our most important things that we have to discuss regarding current. Now, if I've got two amperes of current flowing into this point, and we'll call it we'll call it a black dot, then there must be two amperes of current flowing out. Because what goes into my junction, we'll call this a junction now, flows out of my junction. In the same way, 
and you have to excuse my terrible drawing here, but I've got a roundabout and I've got two cars going into my roundabout, then once they've gone round my roundabout, there must be still two cars flowing out or moving out of the roundabout. So two go in, so two must go out. Okay, that's straightforward and makes sense really when you're talking about single uh, junctions like this, but let's, let's make it slightly more complicated. So this time I've got two ways for my current to flow out. And if I say I've got two amperes flowing in and one ampere flowing out that way and one ampere flowing out that way, then this is the same as looking at my roundabout now with three exits. So here's my roundabout with three exits. I've still got two cars that are moving into my roundabout, but this time one of them has taken the third exit and one of them has taken, oh, sorry, the second exit, and one of them has taken the first exit. So there is still a total of two cars coming out of my roundabout when two cars go into it. Okay, so what, what does this say? Well, this what we're trying to get to here is that the current flowing into a junction is the same as the current flowing out of a junction. The total current flowing out of a junction. So this means that the number of electrons uh, flowing into my junction is the same as the number of electrons flowing out because electrons are never used up. Okay, and that's really important to note because current doesn't change in this respect. The current that flows into a junction is equal to the total current flowing out of a junction because we don't lose any electrons. So we'll go a step further. Let's, let's see an example kind of question that we could expect to see in our exams about this. So I've got four amps flowing into my junction. I've got two amps flowing out in that direction and I've got X amps flowing out in that direction. Well, if I know that four is going into my junction, then that must be equal to two, which is flowing out plus X. And hopefully, You've spotted already that obviously 4 minus 2 will give me x, which is going to give me 2 amps. So therefore, 4 flows in, 2 flows that way, so I've lost 2 of those 4, so I'm left with 2 to flow that way. So let's do another one to have a look at this. So I've got 3 amps flowing into my junction. I'm going to have 0 0.5 amps flowing out this way and x amps flowing out that way. So three amps are flowing in, so just as last time, let's put my in of my red. So three amps flow in, I've got 0 0.5 flowing out plus an unknown amount. So that must mean I've got three minus 0 0.5, give me the unknown amount, which is then going to be 2.5 amps. Because what flows into my junction must flow out of my junction. So let's do one more. Make it slightly more complicated. So I've got two amps flowing in. And I'm going to have 0 0.5 amps also flowing in. And I don't know what's flowing out. So this time I'm going to have two amps. And I'm going to have 0 0.5 amps both flowing in. And I don't know what I've got flowing out. So 2 plus 0 0.5 is going to be 2.5. So I would have 2.5 amps flowing out because what flows into my junction must flow out of my junction. Okay, hopefully that's made a bit of sense for you. So what I would like to do now 
is I'd like you to have a go at four of them that I've got on the PowerPoint. So the first one, we've got 18 amps flowing in. Notice the colors of the wires. I've tried to make that a bit easier for you. So the orange wires are flowing into the junction and the black wires are flowing out of the junction. And the question mark tells you which ones you're trying to find out. So in the first, we've got 18 and six flowing in. Second one, we've got four and a half flowing in, one and a half flowing out, and we don't know what else is flowing out. Uh, third one, we've got 2.8 flowing in and an unknown flowing in, but we do know fully what's flowing out. And then the final one, there are four flowing in and one flowing out. So pause the uh, YouTube video here and draw these down. Make sure you draw them. Really important to have drawings in your books and have a go at answering the question marks. Okay, welcome back. Let's go through some answers. So for the first one, we have 18 flowing in and another six flowing in and we don't know what's flowing out. So uh, 18 and six in total are flowing in. And we don't know what's flowing out. We'll call that X. So 18 plus six is going to be 24 amps because remember what flows into my junction must flow out of it. I can't lose any within it. Okay, second one. We've got 2.8 flowing in and we've got an unknown flowing in and we've got two lots of flowing out with 1.2 and 6. So I've got 2.8 plus an unknown is going to give me 6 plus 1.2. So I know that that is going to be 7.2 amps. And I know this side, I've still got my 2.8 plus my X. Well, if I want X on my own, this is a plus on this side. So if I want to get rid of it from this side, I'm going to take away from both sides. So I'm going to be left with X is going to be equal to, let's do it black, otherwise it looks odd. It's going to be equal to 7.2 minus that 2.8, which I've taken from both sides, which is going to leave me with an answer of uh, 7.2, Oh, uh, use a calculator. Nothing worse than getting this wrong. So 7.2 minus 2.8, which will give me an answer of 4.4 amps. So there will be 4.4 amps flowing in, because remember, what flows into my junction must flow out of my junction. Okay, on to the next one. So this time we've got 4.5 flowing in, and we know we've got 1.5 flowing out that way. We don't know what the flow is out this direction, so we need to work it out. So I've got 4.5 amps. It's going to be equal to my 1.5 plus my unknown, which we'll call x. So that means that x then is going to be my 4.5 minus my 1.5, because we're trying to get rid of uh, that 1.5, so I've only got my unknown on one side, which is going to leave me with an answer of 3 amps. So there would be an extra 3 amps flowing out that way, because 3 plus 1.5 gives me the 4.5 amps that I have flowing in. And in the last one, the hardest one of all, hopefully you've managed to have a go at this one as well. So 2.8 plus 3.1 plus 1.2 plus my unknown is going to be equal to 8.4 amps. So we need to add up what we already know on this side. So 2.8 plus 3.1 plus 1.2, which I know is going to be 7.1. So I've got 7.1 plus my X, which I don't know, is going to give me 8.4. So my X then, it's going to be equal to 8.4 minus 7.1. And 8.4 minus 7.1 is going to be 1.3. So we should have 1.3 amps flowing out, uh, flowing in this direction to ensure we've got the right amount flowing out. Because remember, what flows into my circuit must, or my junction, must flow out of my junction. I can't lose any electrons along the way. Okay, so 
the harder idea, I think, out of the two here is this idea of potential difference. Now, potential difference is the push. In fact, there's, there's sort of two definitions for it, and they're both the same if you really think about it. But potential difference is the push of the electrons around the circuit. So if I have my electrons in a line, so here are all my electrons inside of my wire, then my battery is basically, here's, let's put a battery on this side, and imagine that this loops round. So here, here's my wire without a battery, here's my wire with battery or a cell. Then what that is going to do is it's going to push each electron along and as one electron gets pushed, it pushes all the others because remember, they're all negatively charged and negatives will push each other. So it kind of acts a bit like dominoes. If you push the first one, if you imagine these electrons are all kind of at the dominoes in a row, if you push that first domino, it's going to fall over, which is going to push the next one over, going to push the next one over, and so on, all the way round the circuit. Okay, so. What you have to remember here is if we don't have a connected circuit, actually what will happen is, yes, we can push the electrons, but they'll get to the end and they can't go anywhere. So it's only when we have a fully connected circuit is that when we push that first electron, it pushes all the other electrons in the circuit and comes back to the beginning. Now, the other way to think about potential difference, and this is the right way to think about it, because without the, the potential difference, we're not pushing the electrons so they don't move. But the other idea to have with this being electrons is to go back to Mr. Electron. Here is Mr. Electron. And Mr. Electron is unhappy because he's negative charge. I'd like to give him a little top hat. I think he'd have a top hat. Anyway, Mr. Electron, he is unhappy, he's negative charge, and he's carrying a box. Now this box if we read what the label says, it says energy. So Mr. Electron carries around a box of energy around the circuit. Now this box of energy is what the cell or the battery has given us in the first place. So each Mr. Electron carries this box of energy and it all gets carried around the, the circuit itself. And kind of that push is that energy. That's what we're talking about. So let's consider a circuit for a moment. So here's my circuit. I have got a cell. And I have got a filament bulb. And because the circuit has to be complete, let's finish it by drawing our uh, other wires around to complete the circuit itself. Now... I want to think about energy for a moment. And it's the energy that the electrons have. And it's as we go across this wire here with the cell and the battery itself. Now, my electron, we're going to consider has no energy. Before it comes to the battery itself, it has no energy because my electrons are going to go around in this direction here. So no energy until it gets to the cell where it's going to pick a certain amount of energy up. My electrons then are going to carry that energy until they get to the bulb, where they're going to give that energy up and convert it into light energy, and then they're going to have no energy until they come back around again. So we have gained potential difference, or gained energy. So here we're gaining due to the cell. And at the bulb here, we're losing energy because we're emitting it as light from the bulb itself. So different components can give energy, that's cells, or lose energy, which is anything that is converting uh, sort of the electrical energy to another energy. So let's consider a more complicated idea. 
this is kind of a starting one. Let's go for something a bit more complex. Now, I'm not going to finish my circuit this time, so just have to imagine that this is a completed uh, circuit. So here I have got just one cell. This time, I'm going to have two bulbs in series. And here is my energy again. So I'm going to come along, but effectively zero might not be zero but we have effectively zero because it's always going to be at this level anywhere where it's not gained or lost any we're then going to come to the cell let's pick some energy up it's going to come to the first bulb and these bulbs are exactly the same so it's going to lose half the energy in the first bulb it's going to come to the second bulb and it's going to lose half the energy in the second bulb and it's effectively back down to zero so again we have a gain of potential difference which is where it's gone through the cell and we are losing potential difference at the first bulb and then the same at the second You'll notice we're always getting back to this same level again let's do do another one let's see if we can do this idea so now we're going to have a cell a bulb a cell another bulb again imagine that it's all connected so here is my energy graph again we get to the cell and the energy is going to increase we get to the bulb and the energy is going to decrease we get to the cell and the energy is going to increase and we get to the bulb and the energy is going to decrease so this time we've got two where we're gaining potential difference And we've got two points where we're losing potential difference. And this relies upon those cells being equal and those bulbs being equal. Otherwise, things would look a little bit different. Let's do one more. And then there's going to be uh, one or two for you to have a go at uh, in a moment. So this time I've got two cells. And two bulbs, two filament lamps. Okay, so sort of work along with me as we do this one. We go to the first cell. We're going to gain some energy. We go to the second cell. We're going to gain a bit more energy. Now we've got quite a lot of energy, but we've got to give it up over two bulbs. So we have to give half to this one, if they're the same bulb, and half to this one. So here we're going to go along to the first bulb. And we're going to drop to one half our starting value and go to the second bulb and we'll drop to the other half the starting value. So again, we've got two points where we're gaining potential difference. So here and here, both of the cells. And then we're losing potential difference, both of the bulbs, because remember, the bulbs are emitting light. Okay, so... I'd like you to have a go at one or two now. I'm going to draw them out for you on the board and then you can uh, pause and see if you can do the same. So we'll start with a simple one. So one cell, one bulb. And let's do a more complex one. One cell, two cells, three cells, and one bulb. Okay, so see if you can just draw those energy diagrams there just to show what is happening. So pause the YouTube video here and have a go at those. Okay, well done. Hopefully you've had a go. So let's have a look at this first one. So we're going to go along the first cell. I'm going to pick our energy up. Go along to the bulb. We know we're going to lose our energy there. And we should have... Again, if you've done it with different colours, it'd be really helpful. Potential difference increase at the cell. Potential difference decrease at the bulb. Okay, what about the second one? Slightly harder. This time we're going to go small increase, small increase, small increase. And then we're going to get to the bulb and we're going to lose it all. Because there's nothing else to lose in the circuit. So we're going to have that the cells are basically adding together 
and that the energy then is being emitted at the bulb. So if these cells are the same, which one do you think would have the brighter bulb? Well, it would in fact be the second one because here we've got three lots of potential difference being picked up and then being emitted. And here we've just got one lot of potential difference being picked up and then emitted. So you can see we're gaining potential difference three times, which we're then losing. So let's imagine that these were two volts each, two for six volts. So I'd be losing six volts here. If this was two volts, then this would only be two volts it was losing. Okay, so potential difference itself and we're going to abbreviate it here with just PD because it gets a bit long to write all the time. But we measure it in volts. With a voltmeter. And we always put that voltmeter. So let's say we want to measure the potential difference across my bulb. Then we always put that voltmeter in parallel because we only want one of our electrons to flow through there and we want all the rest of them all the rest of that current to flow through the bulb and really all we're doing is we're checking how much energy it has before how much energy it has after and comparing the two so if we're um, dropping by 4.5 volts let's say then this electron has 4.5 more volts than this electron here. Okay. So let's look at a couple of example circuits now to really understand what we've talked about today. We're going to compare two circuits and we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a, a table crib sheet to help ourselves with this. So here is a series circuit and it's series because every component is one after the other okay it's a six volt series circuit and there are two amps flowing of current flowing through so if two amps enters my corner here then two amps must leave if two amps enters my bulb two amps must leave. If two amps of electrons or current enters my second bulb, two amps must leave. And if two amps leaves this bulb, two amps must enter this battery here. So we can say that in a series circuit, and here's our tables going on the other side, so series, parallel, I'm going to compare the two, current, I, voltage, V. So in a series circuit, the current is always the same. Okay, but what about the potential difference? Well, if these two bulbs are equal, and they must be equal for this to be true, because it depends on something called resistance, which we'll get into in a later lesson, then my six volts must be shared between my two bulbs. So this one would have a potential difference of three volts and this one would have a potential difference of three volts so we can say that in series my potential difference is shared so my current stays the same my potential difference is shared what about if we're in parallel let's have a look <coughs> so we've still got our same six volt power supply and it's still going to only push two amps through my circuit but this time I'm going to have a filament bulb on one branch and I'm going to have a filament bulb on the other branch I'm going to treat these branches as separate that's the way we're going to work this out so if two amps enters or leaves the battery how much must go back into the battery at the end of this circuit well, hopefully you just said two amps because I can't lose any electrons from the point where they're leaving the battery to where they're coming back to the battery. OK, so now let's consider this first branch all the way around. If two amps. In fact, let's, let's consider the fact the two bulbs are equal. So if two amps enters my junction. And I get. 
one amp flowing that way, then I must also get one amp flowing that way. So what can we say about the current in parallel? Well, the current in parallel is shared. So you share the current in the parallel circuit. So one amp flows through that circuit or one amp flows through that um, branch, then one amp must flow through the other side as well. If one amp enters my bulb, one amp must leave my bulb, okay, because the electrons are never used up. Current remains constant. Okay, and when they come back together, do we get two amps coming out? Yes, because one amp flows in, one amp flows in, two amps flow out. So we are all the way back round. But now let's consider the potential difference. Just looking at this first uh, circuit first. Six volts is coming out. Yes, my current is splitting, but each electron flowing down here still has six volts. So this bulb will in fact have six volts potential difference. And here, yes, my current is splitting, but each electron is still carrying six volts. So this second bulb must also have six volts of potential difference. So my bulbs have the same potential difference when they are in parallel. So you can see this is a really, really important table that hopefully will help you. In series, my current is the same everywhere because I can't lose any electrons, but my potential difference is shared between the components. So six volts goes in, three volts goes out, three volts goes out. Okay. In parallel, my current is shared because I have different branches for these electrons to flow down, but my potential difference remains the same because each electron contains the full six volts. Now, obviously, this can be more complicated if we then have a bit of series and a bit of um, a parallel, so we could have a more complicated circuit like this, but this is the fundamentals. It's really important to learn. So series, current remains the same, potential difference is shared. Parallel, current is shared, potential difference remains the same. Okay. So, if we want to measure the current, we've learned as we've started this lesson, lesson that we would use an ammeter. Now, if we know that all of the current is going to flow into and out of a component, then the ammeter needs to be in series. And if we want to measure the voltmeter, uh, sorry, the voltage, then we have to measure it in, whoops, can't see that, in parallel. Why? Because we want to measure the complete voltage at that point there. Well, you'll notice that the one in parallel has the same value as the other one. So place the voltmeter in parallel and you're measuring the voltage here. But it's really important to note that very little current flows down here, otherwise it would affect the value you're getting here. Okay, right, so time for a little challenge, I think. On the PowerPoint, you can see it says, what are the values of the ammeters? And we're told that there is one amp flowing to the battery. You can just see this on the side here. So what is the value going to be for A1, A2, and A3? So pause the PowerPoint here, uh, sorry, the YouTube video here, and work out what A1, A2, and A3 would be. Okay, hopefully you realized that A1 would be one amp, A2 then would be one amp, because if one amp flows into my bulb, one amp must flow out of my bulb. A3 would also be one amp, because one amp flows into my bulb, one amp must flow out of my bulb, and that means that one amp flows into my battery, and one amp must flow out of my battery. Obviously it goes the other way, because remember that this is the electrons coming out this side here, so we go three, two, one, and then back in. 
Okay, what about the potential difference? Hopefully work that out at the same time. If I've got six volts across my two cells here at the start where I'm gaining my potential difference, then across my first bulb, and these bulbs are equal, I must use half of my potential difference. And across my second bulb, I must use the second half. And half of six volts is three volts. So I would have three volts for V1 and three volts for V2. Just check our answers are correct. So one amp flows into one amp, flows into one amp, flows into one amp, because we're in series. Six volts on the um, source of potential difference of two cells. So that means three volts across the first bulb and three volts across the second bulb. So they're gonna be not as bright as they could be, these two lamps. Okay, time for you to have a go at some questions here. So we've got a circuit and there are seven questions to go with it. We've got 12 volts coming into our circuit here where four, four amperes of current are flowing out of it into a junction. We've got an unknown ammeter D here, which is on the branch with the bulb C. We know the branch of A and B has got one amp coming back into the junction here, which is going into an unknown ammeter E, and we've got bulbs A and B. So seven questions. Pause the YouTube here. It might help to draw this and write the questions so that you've got the questions in your book to help you. Um, some of the answers are just letters. Some of them are numbers. Have a go. Come back to the YouTube once you're ready to go through the answers. Okay, let's go through some answers then. Which bulb has a potential difference of 12 volts? Well, we can see that that 12 volts we know will be the same across both branches. There's only one branch where there's one bulb, so that must mean it gets all 12 volts. So the answer to this one would be C. Which bulb has the greatest current? Well, if one amp is flowing out of my branch, then how much must have flown in? Well, one amp must flow in, so let's add that bit there. And if one amp flows in, then we know there must be three amps flowing down this route. So therefore, the bulb with the greatest current is going to be C as well. And which bulb then has the highest potential difference? Well, let's compare these bulbs. We know that C has got 12 volts, but we know that those 12 volts are shared between A and B, so they're going to be 6 each. So the answer to 3 is going to be C as well. So there should be 3 Cs here. Then question 4. Which bulb could change the output of another bulb if it breaks? So if A or B breaks, well, let's consider B breaking. What's going to happen to A? Well, no current can flow through this circuit. If no current can flow through this branch, then A is not going to turn on. But what happens if B breaks to C? Well, if no current can flow through this branch, then all the current's going to flow through this branch. So C is just going to have a greater current fluid flowing through it. But in fact, it will still have the same uh, potential difference. So if we look here, we'll see that B could affect A, or in fact A could affect B, but neither of them really will affect C. So which bulb could change the output of another bulb if it breaks? Is A or B? State the potential difference of C. Well, we've already worked that one out. The potential difference has got to be 12 volts, because it's 12 volts across this branch, so it must be 12 volts across this branch. So that's going to be 12 volts. State the potential differences of A and B. Well, if they're the same and I've got 12 volts being shared across both of them, then they most, both must be 6 volts. And state the current at D and E. Well, D we'd already worked out was 3 amps. And E, if 4 is flowing out of my battery, then 4 must flow back into my battery. So 4 amps flows back in. Okay, so hopefully you managed to get that correct. So let's just now sum up these rules and I would recommend you write these down. So three really important rules and feel free to pause the, PowerPoint, uh, pause the YouTube here. So number one, the same current will always pass through components that are in series with each other. So we've talked about that. Anything that's in series will always have the same current. Number two, the total potential difference of a voltage supply in a series circuit is shared 
between the components. So go back to A and B here. You saw that they both had the same potential difference because we're sharing them because the components are the same. If the components weren't the same, then they'd be shared unequally. They wouldn't necessarily be six and six. It might be two and four. Oh, sorry, six and six, it might be two and 10. But it's really important to note that it is shared, but not necessarily shared equally. And number three, the total potential difference of the cells in series is equal to the sum of the potential difference of each cell. In other words, I've got two cells that are six volts each in my circuit. So therefore, my total potential difference going into my circuit is going to be 12 volts because I add them together. If I've got two one and a half volt cells in series, then I'm going to have three volts in total. Okay, so we've looked at these, but again, here's our definitions. Let's make sure we've got these down. Ammeters measure the amount of current flowing through the circuit, so must be connected in series. Potential difference is the measurement of the change of energy that the electrons have over a component, and the greater potential difference, the greater the current, because we can push more electrons, so more electrons move, so we've got a greater current. And voltmeters can measure the change in potential difference on one electron, so they can be connected in parallel to the component being measured. or well, they are connected in parallel, sorry. Okay, so this is the end of the lesson here. So let's go through and check we've covered everything we need to do. So looking at the uh, specification, we need to know that a voltmeter is connected in parallel and our ammeter is connected in series. We need to describe that when a closed circuit includes a source of potential difference, there'll be a current. So the circuit has to be complete for there to be a current. Because remember, you can't push electrons really over a gap. And we need to remember that current is conserved which means that the current that flows into my junction is equal to the current that flows out of my junction. So looking at what we had to cover, we've described how to measure voltage. We use a voltmeter and it must be in parallel. We've defined the term potential difference. We've described how to measure current and current is measured with an ammeter in series. We've described the conditions needed to produce an electric current and we've described the behavior of a current at a junction. Okay, as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to email us on the usual email address at school. And I hope you now go and have a go at some of the questions that I've set out for you.